Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to understand locking in SQL Server. Locking is pretty hot topic in SQL Server. And in my opinion, everybody should really understand back what's going on um, back behind the scene when we talk about locking in SQL Server. In this demo, we'll be learning brief overview of resource types. When I talk about the resource types, that means where the SQL Server can place the lock. What are the things that SQL Server can go ahead and lock? that is called in SQL Server locking world resource types. And number two, brief overview of lock modes. What kind of lock can be placed on these resources right here? And we'll be discussing that. And then we will go, go and once we understand number four right here, that what are the resources and what are the lock modes and what mean, what it means each lock mode. And then we'll go in our live database and see all those lock placed. Once we understand, as soon as we'll take a first look on the locks, we will understand right away what it means, what's happening back behind the scene. Because being a DBA, you know, your uh, SQL Server is there uh, for data and a lot of applications are accessing it and how that's happening if you run into a locking situation, you need to understand which lock is basically okay and which lock is not okay. So. Um, Let's go ahead and talk about lock resources. As I said, that uh, uh, lock resources means that uh, where the SQL Server can place the lock, what are the things. And first up here is uh, RID, which means row identifier. Uh, that means that each um, SQL Server can place a lock on a single row in a table. So it can go ahead and place a lock. That is our first resource. SQL Server has a tendency to go ahead and lock the row. And the second is the key lock. That means that uh, we usually have indexes on our tables. And um, if there is a key lock, that means a single row within that index. So keep in mind that you understand the difference between RID and key. When we talk about RID, we're talking about the row in a table. And when we talk about the key, that means each row in within an index. Index gets stored on the, if it's a clustered index, uh, depends on the type of index, uh, they do get stored on the uh, uh, disk as well. So you can, uh, SQL Server has a tendency or has you know permission to go ahead and lock each row within that index and that resource is called key resource. The other is a uh, page. All the data that is in SQL Server gets stored in terms of pages on the storage. So page is 8 KB so SQL Server can go ahead and basically lock a page um, on, on uh, uh, in the database so you this is this becomes one resources as well for SQL Server to go ahead and lock it and other is extent extent is basically combination of pages eight pages together makes an extent so SQL Server can pay uh, can go ahead and uh, lock the entire extent that means eight contagious pages uh, makes an ex extent and SQL Server can go ahead and lock the entire extent. And the other other thing that SQL Server could do is go ahead and lock the whole table. And when we talk about locking the table, that means it's locking the data in the table as well as it's locking the um, indexes on that particular table. So next thing that SQL Server can lock is DB. So we understood the lock resources where SQL Server can place the lock. Let me go through a little quick now. Uh, row identifier, key is a, a single row within an index. Page is uh, 8 KB. Extent is 8 pages. Table is entire table, including data and the uh, indexes. And DB is entire DB. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, lock modes. And I have just put uh, in MS Paint right here because sometimes uh, I think that uh, I need to draw something. My drawing is not all that great anyway. So um, if I need to draw something to make you understand, to explain a little better, I'll try my best. So first uh, up here, lock mode, you will see um, in database if you ever uh, ran into, um, you know, looking into the lock locks, you will see a lot of uh, S locks right here, the shared locks. Let me do this. So you will see the shared locks. Shared locks means that any operation that is not modifying SQL Server data 
or the schema that would be a shared log so this would be uh, in easy terms for us that a select can place a shared lock on a table. Um, if you're selecting a database, it can place a shared lock on a database. This is not, uh, this is very common lock, and this is the first lock. Keep in mind, a lot of folks that I've, I've, I've read a lot about locks when, in my days too, but uh, I think that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of folks, uh, what they missed was that every time any lock happens, it starts from shared locks. That's what I, I, I noticed. Every uh, next lock, if you ever heard the term uh, lock chaining, you know, lock chaining starts from the shared lock. So this is the basic lock that SQL Server can place. Anytime there is a bell that, oh, I need something from such and such database, that would be that for SQL Server engine, it would mean, oh, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and... Um, place a shared lock on that so that you know database or table entity would know that I am coming to get something from you and that means that I'm not changing anything but I'm coming there and reading some of the data that would be our shared lock and it's very common and and don't worry about if you see a shared lock that is actually basically a good thing that if you see a lot of share shared lock but uh, our next type up here is update log so this is um, where I need to draw something basically uh, update logs uh, up here is u type in in database you will see that uh, u uh, but update logs are uh, there to prevent the first type of deadlock so I will go in much more detail of deadlocks but let me let me uh, make you understand that where the update lock came from so here is uh, my transaction one here is my data right here and this is my transaction one and this is my transaction two right here and this transaction here from something that oh I need to look in something on table one and say okay I'll go ahead and place a shared lock as I said that any time when you get it gets in 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 the uh, transaction that I need to do something on table one let me put a table one here so I'll go ahead and put a shared lock at the same time keep in mind we're talking about at the same time transaction two gets an order saying I need to do something on table one so both are so let me let me go ahead and put a shared lock so now table one is uh, the, transaction one is thinking the same thing and the same time transaction two is thinking the same thing now what exactly do I need to do transaction one as so it means it, the answer comes okay you need to update something in table one and transaction two at the same time asks, what do I need to do and that's the same answer you need to update something now it says okay since it's update let me put an exclusive lock that means that I am everything once I put X on this table it belongs to me it's I am the owner now nobody can access until I'm done with this table same thing with this it's it's, it's, it, it's coming in and is saying okay I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place exclusive lock on this table so now SQL Server engine comes in and engine says oh well I am not compatible with this situation you know this situation is not something that I like um, I don't want you guys to you know go ahead of me I have a process what SQL Server at the same time tells this transaction and this transaction wait SQL Server engine tells this transaction wait for T2 transactional 2 to finish then you can go ahead and do whatever you need to do and transactional 2 right here uh, it orders the same things to transaction 2 wait till transaction 1 finishes now these tra two transactions are waiting for each other they're not doing anything nothing is happening to table 1 they're just fighting with each other so here comes we talk about deadlock so they both basically 
waiting for each other and nobody is doing anything but they're locking the resources in a way that okay once once this this is place when you understand a little bit more we go down you will understand that once exclusive lock intense intended exclusive lock is placed up here then no other transaction basically go ahead and do anything but they are just waiting for this any three transaction third transaction comes in it's got to wait till these two guys are finished so this is where we run into the first type of a uh, very basic type of deadlock so in order to prevent this particular first type of uh, deadlock there is something called update lock right here so once the update lock right at uh, once instead of running into this situation sql server does this okay let me give you t1 let me give you updatable locks so that means that uh, uh, this this guy is not really waiting it's in, in a way it's waiting but it's it's waiting this this one is not waiting sql server engine went ahead and gave this guy priority saying okay go ahead and place u lock that means this whenever this guy t uh, transactional 2 will see that it's a u lock from this guy okay let him finish and they will actually get in line basically that okay let him do his work and let me do my work however i can't do anything until this guy is finished so that is where the concept of it up here is update update lock keep in mind is just there for a little bit to prevent from deadlock situation like this okay so once this this happens that update lock acquires now here comes the operation what do i need to do i know that i'm going to update but update what as soon as it's, it it sql server engine sees that it has update lock and next thing that it needs to modify something right in the table so as soon as modification comes in the picture x comes in the picture exclusive lock exclusive lock means okay I got the ownership nobody can do anything on any of the resource keep in mind these resources can change it like um, exclusive lock can be on a uh, key can be on page can be extent can be table can be d database so keep in mind that any of the resources can become the victim of these lock modes right here so what I'm saying is that uh, update lock is there to prevent the situation getting messy here but it doesn't stay there for long it's just for a fraction of second once this this turns into exclusive lock which takes us to our uh, third mode right here which means that uh, okay whatever the operation is happening no other transaction can do anything on once this is acquired so if you see x lock um, that means the the operation update operation delete operation insert operation something like is happening uh, on on your uh, table or row or particular page or particular extent or whatever the basically uh, the resource up here is so just so that you know that this is a something this is a superset this is super guy at that time when exclusive lock happens now we um, next up here this guy is very important too now when exclusive lock happens uh, some you know let's say that it's on a, a row three rows exclusive lock is on um, row ID so basically we have a, a 20,000 uh, rows in a SQL serve uh, in a table so first three are being you know exclusively locked by by a transaction and the next um, it, it still won't let you do anything however a person can come just like we go in social security office and we take our number and sit and wait right the same thing happens here in SQL Server world it's called intent it says that okay I intend to, sh to basically I want to read something I know that you are sitting X right there and will not let me do anything but let me tell you that I need to read something here 
once you're done please let me read what i'm not going to touch what you are doing right here but underneath rest of the rows that you're not placing the lock i need to read that so once once this uh, uh, order comes in that means it's a shared as we saw that up here that this is mostly a select operation that's intent shared that means that i have intention to read some data not all but some data but uh, this once this is placed then this transaction will take precedent and, and 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 can read and next thing is that okay i need to do some modification on this table but not all of it some of the rows i'm going to update or modify but not all so let me tell you i need to do something to it so basically it that means intent exclusive right here but these are the basic locks and then after that we run into you know priority and situation like that and that's where we uh, you know the modes gets more uh, the, the chain the lock chains uh, go uh, way bigger so it here up it means that okay I have intent exclusive exclusive which once this guy get into the table and start doing modification it goes back basically to X it doesn't stay here for long but until it's not available it's gonna stay here and it's gonna say that okay I need to modify so uh, it's my turn you can't do anything about it so up here this is a shared intent log the in shared intent uh, uh, exclusive lock means that uh, I need to read all the resources of this table I need to read all the rows but I need to at the same time I need to modify something in not all the rows but three or four rows I'm going to modify however I need to read all the rows so once this is it's also called six so shared ex, uh, intent exclusive only one six can be placed on a table only one six can be placed on a table and this is basically when we talk about intent that is higher level uh, uh, lock so it is placed only on the tables right here so uh, this this most of the time this goes back to right here so table so it goes intent whenever is intent it it mostly means table so uh, next uh, our here lock mode is schema schema has a uh, schema as you know that uh, the ddl changes any um, adding uh, column dropping column um, changing the data types of a column and dropping the table all that comes as a schema changes now there are two uh, uh, types of schema uh, lock modes one is schema modification right here and other is stability right here schema stability so let's talk about schema modification schema modification from the name it shows that either the column is being dropped or column is being added on that particular resource right here mostly the resource is table or index so um, or database basically so this is modification if the modification is going on on a schema then basically no nothing else can be done so this is a, a kind of dangerous type up here schema modification because uh, uh, DDL uh, is uh, is um, is changing the schema of the table and um, it's not good to read the data it's not gonna actually basically so you're seeing right here when I talk about this whole scenario that why locking is very important for us you know in order to have our data more granular so really it is uh, it is not our enemy it is there to help us and the other thing up here is uh, uh, schema uh, um, stability schema stability comes in when there is a compiling going on so usually if uh, uh, you will see this schema stability lock in in um, dev environment where a lot of developers are developing the code and they are going go ahead and compiling it or in production if there is some change in store procedure or in in any of these right here and compiling going on then you will see the schema share uh, uh, stability lock right here 
So this is the schema. If schema stability log any, all the operation can basically can come and uh, uh, select and it can, it's basically shared. You know, uh, if a schema stability, any other transaction, even exclusive lock can be placed. However, modification will have to wait. If it's going to be modified, that cannot be done. However, exclusive lock can be placed. Ex once exclusive lock can be placed, as we know, we learned that, oh, okay, because of update or something, it's placed exclusive. But that doesn't mean that right away the operation will start. Okay, so operation, let's say it's a del uh, updating something. So X is placed, but if, if it's right here, if a schema, a stability lock is there, X has to wait to modify. Even though it has taken a say, I am the guy next in line, I will do what I need to do since I have an X on that particular resource. But this guy is saying, okay, you can place X. I'm not preventing you to do that. I'm not preventing you to take the turn, but let me finish that. I'm not going to let you modify anything, basically. Um, however, you can go ahead and read, shared lock can come, and, and different transaction can come in and read the data and all that. But however, the compilation, when compilation is going on, you cannot basically modify the data. So the other next are lost up here mode is um, bulk update bulk update is sometimes it's it is much better uh, if you are um, uploading a sensitive data and you do not want dirty reads uh, to happen in your upload or you know when you're uploading it's always good idea to basically define that I am going to lock this table because I'm uh, I'm basically inserting a lot of bulk operation is going on I'm inserting a lot of data in this table so I'm going to go ahead and lock this table for a particular uh, period of time so I'm going to go ahead and um, place a lock called BU that is bulk update so as I said that my drawing is pretty bad, really. Um, but uh, it, this, I, I thought that this is mandatory to make you understand back what's going on back behind the scene. It is important for any DBA to understand the lock resources, lock modes, why things happen, because sometimes it's a production. You don't want to kill an operation thinking that, oh, okay, it's update lock. There are so many update locks and I'm getting into performance hit. So let me kill this let me, operation or process. Don't, don't get into that. Please understand the locking in SQL Server before you uh, do anything as far as locking goes. So let's go back to our um, up here. As I said that uh, um, we went through the overview of resource types, we went through the overview of locking modes, and we went through the resources and modes in detail. Let's go ahead and look on a live database uh, to find that what are what are the locking and what kind of locks we see. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and into my SQL Server. And we will see that what kind of locks. I, I just wanted to show you that when you run a command to see the locks, what kind of locks you will see. So I'm going and connecting with my management studio. I'm going to go ahead and connect with my SQL production. As you can see, there's uh, there are a lot of. I'm going to go ahead and the command is SP lock just so that you know that um, if I run this you will see as you can see right here the modes okay the modes is shared schema stability compilation right now this doesn't have many locks so let's try any other database where we can have I don't have many uh, really locks um, going on so wanted to run into uh, up here as you can see the type is database and here is a table type uh, these are the resources basically so um, 
up here is a schema a stability lock so basically if you wanted to look at the locks and we went through the locks uh, up here you just run sp underscore lock and you will see that what you have learned basically I would encourage you to once you understand the concept behind the scene uh, go ahead and run sp underscore lock on your uh, uh, test UAT or dev and see that what kind of mode you get and what kind of type up here you get uh, to see that um, you know what kind of lock is that that will make you understand uh, a bit more about uh, locking all right so that's it that's uh i hope that's this this video really helps because i want everybody to understand that what's uh, locking in sql server is a quite a hot topic everybody has written a lot of stuff about it but uh, understanding what's going back behind the scene is much more important i hope this video helps